All right, great. Um, all right, so welcome everyone to the March 13th uh, Village Goals uh, work session. And uh, Judy, would you call the roll? Yes. Hush. Yes. McQueen. Here, Tim Flynn. Yes. Stokes. Here. Here. Yes. Also, President of the Village Manager, Melissa Van Zandt. Or Dodd. Dodd. <laughs> 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 Actually, uh, I met with Kendall Block today, and he's like, I always call her Melissa Van Zandt. I know. So, yeah. so, I don't know how yeah. that popped out. It's, <laughs> <harsh>. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, first of all, I. Uh, it sounds like maybe we have a few announcements, and then I wanted to say a few words before we launch into the goals. So, um, uh, and the legislation, and we have the legislation as well. Um, so, uh, anyone have? Um, I have an announcement about the discolored water. Um, residents can expect uh, discolored water on Tuesday, March twentieth. Um, we will be. Uh, training on the new valve exercising machine, as well as doing flow tests for the Cresco and uh, fire station, the two construction sites, um, and bottled water will be available to residents uh, in the village offices down at the police dispatch window. Okay. Marion, did you have something? Okay. All right. Um, well, let me, uh, I'll just say mine real quick. Uh, Hope Taft asked me to uh, highlight that um, this week is National Groundwater Awareness Week. And uh, that seems apropos to uh, one of the goals that we'll be talking about later. So I did want to mention that. And uh, there'll be some information about the importance of groundwater in our packet for Monday. Um, and uh, otherwise, Melissa? Um. I think I've had a chance to talk with everybody individually, but I have taken a position with the City of Bellbrook as their City Manager and Finance Director, and my last day will be April 6th with the Village. So, it was a really tough decision, and at the end of the day, it's a good opportunity that I couldn't pass up, so. It's just been wonderful working with everybody. I'll have one more meeting, but just for what it's worth. It was a tough decision, so. Yeah. That's it. Sorry, see you, girl. You've left our finances <laughs> in very good shape. Yes, you did. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I want to reiterate just the how you dug in on things and you know figured out you know everything from the Army Corps of Engineers grant to the Safe Routes to School thing to. As Marianne mentioned, our finances, uh, it's been impressive. And uh, yeah, I'm really sad that you're going to be leaving. So. And speaking of Army Corps of Engineers, I got that check in the mail this week. Ooh, so, sweet. We, we, <laughs> that was real. Yeah, it's <laughs> real. That's, that's done. <laughs> and the staff is going to miss you very, very, very much. Right. But you know, I just heard from Ken LeBlanc today that there are opportunities in Bellbrook to do a better job uh, with their trails and other things. Uh, so, uh, I'm assuming that you will bring that along. So, uh, yes. Uh, well, thanks so much for yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and also, thanks for uh, hanging in because I know just this past week you've been working really hard on getting things together that are going to you know, be highlighted with the goals. And uh, so I guess before we get into that, do we, we do not have Chris here, is that? We do not have Chris here. Okay. You have, what you have, do you want to launch? Yeah. So what you have in front of you with regard to the legislation is a tracked changes version, which was entirely accidental, but which I'm going to make sound on purpose, because now you know what changes were made to what he initially handed out. It's really some minor suggestions made by Rita, to the legislation, so the actual body of the ordinance didn't change at all, but some of the 370,000 pages attached um, have, and that bolded section contains the, the changes for the most part. So you got that in front of you, unless you know, in case you have any questions. What I asked you to put something in writing, and you said, really, there's not much to know. It's very, very minor stuff. So I did not think it's more than from him. Um, all right, well, uh, moving to the legislation then, uh, 
Judy, one of you, uh, and, and I believe this is our second read because we did um, we did introduce this uh, a month ago. So if you could read it in by title only. I will. This is Ordinance 2018 repealing Chapter 881, Earned Income Tax Regulations, effective beginning January 1, 2016, of the codified ordinances of the Village of Village Green, Ohio, and enacting new Chapter 881, Earned Income Tax Regulations, effective beginning January 1, 2016, and declaring the month. Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. We move that we adopt and then like I revise the legislation. I second. Um, so since this is uh, an emergency legislation, um, this will open the public meeting. And uh, so I don't know if uh, council members have any questions or comments. Did you explain what it is? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I mean, I know we've got it before. Right. Um, Judy, do you want to say a little bit? Uh, I'm going to yeah, okay. okay. Basically, what this is, is a, it's a result of House Bill 49. So it has to do um, with um, various things. I know that some of the things that were changed in here were um, some of the uh, net profit, uh, net profit um, provisions and such. So this has been going on for a while, and as everybody remembers, there was some there was some litigation and um, it didn't it didn't go through so now everybody you know was kind of on hold with the legislation and now that the, the litigation didn't go through now everybody is having to pass this in order to conform with house bill 49 so um i know that there is still some litigation out there and the reason why this had to be revised again is because there had to be a few provisions that were put in here that would still allow the village to be able to enter into litigation even though that we're passing this. So um, that's from what I understood from what I read. So um, this is just because of House Bill 49 and that's what, where the changes came and, from. And correct me if I'm wrong, House Bill 49 is saying that the state, that businesses can send their taxes to the state rather than to the municipalities correct. and the state will take a 5% overhead charge. Correct, that's, part, that's a piece of it, yes. Right. The main piece that we're concerned yes, about. Yes, yes, that is the main piece that we're concerned about, in which the litigation is against, correct. And do you have any other things you want to add about? No, I don't think so. I, I just know that that was the main thing that had to be revised so that we can still enter into litigation even though we're passing this. Right. So. I mean, two things I want to highlight. One of them is uh, I was actually at the State House when this passed. And um, one of the things that was highlighted in, uh, on the floor was that the Ohio Municipal League did not question this legislation, which is frustrating to me um, because they are supposed to represent our interests uh, you know, as local municipalities. And uh, I, I, that's very disappointing because I think that this just kind of fell off of their radar and they just didn't really pay attention to the legislation. But that was one of the things that was highlighted by the legislators that were arguing about it was that we never heard any complaints, yeah. so we thought the municipalities were happy with it. So very yeah. frustrating. Isn't the Ohio Municipal League involved in some of the legislation and some of the uh, potential litigation? Um, I haven't seen them be actively involved. I think so. um, it was Rita and Lucas County, a couple of them in Franklin County, I think, were the ones yeah. that I remember. So we haven't we haven't been in conversation with the municipal leader about this. Right. Um, so you know, I think that's. I mean, and in general, I will say that the. O OML has been pretty good about yeah, alerting good. us to that's things, so funny. I don't understand what happened here. Um, and then the other piece that you know we've talked about that you know I still want to resolve is you know what we do next in terms of clarifying, since most of this is aimed at um, the net profit, you know, for uh, taxing net profits for businesses is what we do to uh, ensure that our local businesses go through you know, the village and Rita um, rather than uh, take the election, as they call it, to go through the state. Because um, ultimately that means we get um, less money. So they do have that choice. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
I will add though that I've been getting a flurry of forms that say that they're opting to use the state versus us, but most of them aren't vendors that I even recognize. So I'm assuming that there was some sort of a provision where if, if a certain vendor had used or had done business with a municipality in the last, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 years, they probably had to send one of these forms out because I've probably got a stack of them down there that I've had to send to Rita so that they know that they don't have to collect from those people and that they're going through the state. So um, they, as What's soon as this passed, I started getting flurry of those forms. What's the benefit to the businesses? Um, I think it's it's probably under my assumption that they have to go there to pay other types of taxes, so it's just a kind of a one-stop shop for them. Well, wouldn't it be like the businesses in more than one location? Yeah. If they have to pay the municipality, they have to pay the different municipalities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't. I haven't recognized very many of the names as being local. Um, they, they, I'm assuming that they're vendors that we've done business with at some point, but not recent. Um, I think we should talk to the Ohio Municipal League and find out what happened. I think that's very distressing to hear about. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we don't want that sort of thing to happen in the future, and uh, I'm shocked by that. Who would do that? Thing? I can or Brian if you want. Uh, but why don't you start and uh, I'm happy. I know some of those folks so I can follow up. Um, yeah, I think that's a great idea. And uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, I think that's the piece that we need to understand a little bit better. Um, you know, and again, I, I, you know, I think that is on Chris's plate is, you know, this feels like kind of a big deal to me and so I want to understand a little bit more what the implications you know, are. Maybe they've got something else that'll make us really think about it, but it seems right. like that. Right. And there's kind of a home rule aspect to this also, mm -hmm. <coughs> which, um, you know, the, and I know that the Dayton area of mayors and managers has been adamantly against this. So that's why I don't, so I'm not going to talk to the municipal. I'm a little confused about the Municipal League because they were sending out, they sent out bulletins and most of the bulletins were saying that they were not supporting House Bill 49, at least the ones I read. So I'm a little confused as to why it was mentioned by the legislators that... I mean, maybe they're being disingenuous, but... Speak up. Yeah. yeah. We need to speak up, I oh. think, because we don't, we're not mic. Okay. Um, so I, I, I guess I'm a little confused as to why they were saying that on the floor because the updates that we were getting were, you know, this is not something that we are, maybe they weren't actively opposing it, they just weren't supporting it, I don't know. But that's, I got the impression that they were not, you know, that they were against it from the updates. Mm -hmm. Melissa, you get those. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. We'll find out. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So I think then. Uh, oh, Did you so yes. Yeah, so then we need to uh, do a roll call. What's it? Oh yeah. Uh, any comments from citizens? Okay. If not, we'll bring it back to council table. And uh, Judy, if you call the roll. Yes, McQueen. Yes, Stokes. Yes, Krieger. Yes, Chancellor. Yes, Pausch. Yes. Okay, um, so we're going to move into our discussion of the goals, and uh, I just wanted to say a few things. Um, first of all, uh, I wanted to highlight that you know I think uh, our uh, efforts to uh, try to be more proactive about getting citizen feedback. Um, I really appreciate that uh, council agreed to. Uh, sort of, you know, focus on that and try some different things. I think that was really important. Uh, I want to thank citizens for participating. Um, we got over 150 uh, responses through, you know, whether it was the comment boxes or the Survey Monkey or on Facebook. Um, and I appreciate. I think a lot of that feedback was uh, very constructive, and uh, it it really. Help me think a little bit about 
how we can continue to do better with uh, uh, public engagement. Um, in particular, I guess one of the things I wanted to just put out there, and I was talking to Marianne about this before we started the meeting, is uh, I think um, if we do it, assuming we do it again, that maybe the focus should be more on the um, actions <coughs> that we're taking to accomplish the goals than the goals themselves. Because I realize, I mean, I, I like the way the goals are articulated in general. Um, but I think it may be hard if you're not reading the entire document to see that there are some very concrete steps that we're looking at to achieve those goals. So when I looked at some of the feedback that you know, was critical, um, uh, that was one of the things that I thought probably people didn't see. Um, you know, again, they saw the more general statement, but not some of those um, specific action steps. So, so I just wanted to put that out there, but I think it was a good effort, and I think that we can uh, improve it moving forward, and I'm glad we did it. Um, so with that, if there are no other general comments, um, I think we should take a look at the village values which are on the agenda, because we hadn't really talked about some of the revisions to these, and I wanted to make sure that um, we felt good about, uh, you know, it was essentially taking the six village values that we had, uh, some words were moved around, and then we added a sixth value that's, uh, that's relatively new. And I guess I just wanted to make sure that we felt good about these, if we had any other um, comments that we wanted to make, or uh, if we're comfortable about uh, moving forward with those. I'm comfortable with them. Um, I like them. Do we want Judy to read them? That'd be great. Okay, just go go through them, and then you can discuss them after we're all the way through. Sure. Them one at a time. Um, let's go. Let's just read all six. Okay. Value one: deepen decision-making processes with active citizen participation and effective representative governance. Value two: be a model employer, actively working to achieve diversity in hiring and employer retention and a provider of services within a responsible and sustainable fiscal framework. Value three, be a welcoming community of opportunity for all persons, regardless of race, age, sexual orientation, gender identity, ethnicity, economic status, ability, or religious affiliation. Value four, pursue a strong economy that provides diverse employment, creates a stable tax base, and supports community values, particularly affordability. Value five, seek in all decisions and actions to reduce the community's carbon footprint, encourage sound ecological practices, and provide careful, creative, and cooperative stewardship of land resources. Value six, intentionally promote anti-racism, inclusion, equity, and accessibility through all policies, procedures, and processes. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, any comments on the values? I like them. Yeah, I really do too. <laughs> I mean, but again, I mean, this this really came out of. I mean, most of those values were there already, um, but I think value six uh, is a really important statement that um, it seemed like uh, council and community uh, really wanted us to uh, be uh, articulate in a in a more direct way, and so I think it's really good, and I think it's uh, also reflected in some of the goals. So. I agree. I mean, I think it's important that to you know not be vague, and if, if we value something, we can't put too fine a point on it. So mm -hmm. I, I agree. Good. All right. That's really all. Right. Um, okay. Well, with that, um, the way we're structuring this is we're going to move through the goals. Um, we've listed them in uh, sort of what we kind of assessed as being priority order. And uh, honestly, based on the feedback, I, it, it seems that you know, if we sort of trust that feedback, that um, the community also agrees that we've roughly gotten the priority right. Um, so with that, uh, let's take a look at the first goal. And, um, and can I just say, yeah. I made a huge error in putting this, or this where the new goals are dropped in. None of Mary Ann's housing goals showed up here, so that is put it at the table. It, they did not show up here, so 
Well, Although I did see, I thought they were at the end, though. Yes. But like, for example, there is one related to affordability that isn't inserted into this first row mm -hmm. in the table. So I think it's easy enough to just kind of pretend it's there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I guess... Yes, can yeah. I ask, now, I'm sorry, uh, maybe I missed it, but I didn't see Melissa's uh, piece. I mean, I guess, what do we have here? Maybe we should go over it. So we've got this. Which right. is what we're working off of, correct? Right. So we've got kind of, you know, then the, we've got this. Yeah. So this <laughs> was this, this was the out what was this was the draft that we put out um, for public feedback. Okay. And then uh, the other document is kind of to compare, um, and these are the changes that council members made for their individual goals. So, so and then we're we, talking about when we're talking about one, would you try and put it up so we all know which one? Yeah. 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 So Melissa's is to say where they think staff will be working. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. Staff. Staff right. had a meeting and we went through and basically each one of these um, goals and actions and determined what staff members needed to be actively involved. And Melissa so, put that together in the sheet for everyone. So what I did was like the affordability goal, there were two 2018 actions that were listed. So what I did was very clearly separated those and then put the staff that were responsible. So whereas each individual goal has a number of different 2018 actions, I just very clearly delineated each of the actions so it's a little easier to read. So, and I know that some changes were made, but we had to have a starting point. So this is an earlier starting point than what you're currently working from. But I mean, I think it's important that uh, if, if citizens would see this stuff, they understand. You know, it says staff are responsible. It doesn't mean that council is not involved in some way or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just that that's the staff's support. Yeah, so this was really to um, give us a perspective on, on, um, on you know, right, exactly, and our, the way we're prioritizing things, is this really manageable? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. for, yeah, for I just think that should be clear with the right. yeah. kind of the idea, because it almost looks like you guys are responsible for everything. <laughs> and there, <laughs> it's a lot! <laughs> Yes, and, and that's, I think that's kind of part of what gets away from council a lot of times is we have these actions and they do involve a lot of staff time and then it becomes a competition of staff time for each of the competing goals and that's why we felt it would be really important for council to understand that in more concrete terms. I mean, we've always talked about it. But this way you can see names of people who are actually going to have to be doing, working on these goals. And then there was a second staff meeting amongst the crews, which um, they came up with their own list of different tasks and things that in a lot of ways are related to these goals. And we are having a meeting uh, next Friday with Brian and Marianne to go over those lists before we bring it back to council and let everybody understand. Uh, generally, those different, I mean, it's right now it's two and a half pages long, so. And it's just a bullet point list. It's not even an explanation of what, what these different things are. Right. So. And the way I think of this is, you know, it's kind of a cross check. You know, we've kind of put out there what we think we can accomplish uh, this year, and then we may need to, you know, kind of reevaluate <laughs> what is in fact possible to do. So, um, okay. So with that, I mean. Do you maybe if you want to just read what's on the agenda for the first goal, and then I believe that one is Mises. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. This is to execute a housing development model that encourages all types yeah, of no. oh. affordability. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah, that's actually. So not if what's on the agenda. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Provide an affordable community with a high quality of life that encourages a diverse resident base in terms of race, age, economic status, sexual orientation, gender identity, ethnicity, ability, and religious affiliation. Um, so a couple things. Um, I think the goal, the way the goal is articulated is quite broad and is a multi-year goal. It's a 
it's enough that's one of those that it's going to be you know and you're always going to keep trying to improve in these factors I think the really important focus is where we go with the actions and the, the actions are um, hyper specific and I want to acknowledge uh, an appreciation of the community feedback um, that I think um, supports where we are with some of the recommended actions. I, I appreciate that some of the feedback, um, it was also said at our last council meeting last week, what do you mean by affordable? Right, that's a big bucket. But um, we're also seeing feedback from the community about the council should focus on what the council can actually change right so it's not just like oh mom and apple pie right what can we really tackle and so in that regard I think we're on the right track focusing on utility affordability because it's specific and it may be you know something we can really take on I think the um, importance of establishing this finance committee so that we can maintain the strong economic position that we have but also look for ways to if it's possible um, not you know not continue to not raise taxes not increase costs I mean, I'm hearing that loud and clear from the community. So I feel like we're targeting the right actions um, on that, focusing very much on utilities, particularly electric, and on increasing return on village investment and realizing cost savings that are fiscally responsible if we can. And then I also appreciate, Marianne, that you have added this other goal that has to do with collaborating um, with the township trustees and the school board. Um, I think that we're all in this together. I mean, I don't want to use a, you know, this whole idea of a three-legged stool, but I think that we, we are, we do need to find a way to think and plan together. Um, and and I, I think that the council, I think it's appropriate for the council to take a, a leadership role as a convener. But I mean, that's a big decision. And it would you know, be a, something to establish in an ongoing way. So I think that's something that we need to talk about. Are we the correct convener for bringing those three entities together? Or I just don't know. So I hope that we can have some discussion about that. Um, but I'm feeling good about the goals as stated and the actions focused on utilities, finance analysis, and collaboration with the school board and the township. Okay. And, and so just to clarify, uh, what Mary Ann has added is, is another action that we're It would be another right? action. Yes. Okay. And, and I would like to just address that briefly. Yeah. I'm wondering, should we, is this be, if it's being taped, I'm wondering if you should state what your uh, for bill, because I think it's good. I mean, you've referenced it, but did you, the actual collaborate, that statement about collaborating with the township? Just read it? Yeah, I'm just thinking so people know what we're talking about. Well, it, it says, collaborate with township trustees and the school board to jointly seek ways to lower financial impacts of utilities and taxes on citizens. And my sense is that had the three bodies that are the main governing and taxing bodies of Yellow Springs been in contact two years, within the last two years, so that everyone knew what everyone was planning there could have been ways, I think, that we could have all moved forward, but done it in a way that didn't result in what we have now. Because what we have now is we raised the utilities, the fire station that we passed, and now the schools are putting up their levy and people are upset. Um, I don't know what difference it would make, but at least I think it's worth 
uh, the three bodies coming together to work out, and the council takes the leadership in that. Mm -hmm. Um, on a separate note, in terms of actions, that action actually is not related to the that collaboration. That's that, and I the action about strategies for low and moderate income housing. Is that what you're talking? No, about? I, I no. I'm looking back to page one uh, of this. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the actions under 2018, I, I wanted to recommend, I, I thought I had tried to send it out and you maybe didn't get it when I was in uh, Minnesota, that we add an action of reviewing and updating village utility policies uh, to ensure they support affordability. So, um, oh sorry, finish. I, yeah, I and, and, what I'm, and what I'm referencing is um, the policy around uh, um, landlord, the this the situation where landlords are responsible for utility bills and and the actions around that, so that if a tenant is late on their utility bill, um, the landlord is notified, uh, which I which I feel can be a real concern for tenants, um, and then secondly. Uh, the, our shutoff policies, and especially in the winter, um, and so that's something uh, that I want to suggest we add. So um, at the last uh, council meeting, I presented a report to council related to utility affordability that had more granular actions along those lines. Okay. So I guess an in general question is how how granular are we going to get on these actions so that's completely in, in other words yeah. if we say if we have something that says to um, identify opportunity and opportunities for you know if is that uh, do we, or do we want to get more specific in this document well maybe the details can be separate and maybe reference I mean I sort of did that when I had that Excel spreadsheet about right. timeline for housing, something like that. Right, more like a project plan. Yeah. So, but I, but I just didn't see it covered under yeah. these two things yeah. that were identified, and that's and I wanted that to. I've been thinking this has been important since I came back onto the council. Right. Look at these uh, policies and you know consider whether we want to change them or not. And um, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I so think I just didn't think it was. I think we're starting to look at a lot of a lot of the financial modeling for a lot of the different policies. So I think that's a great one to add. I I guess I don't think that for this document we necessarily would want to call out like for example landlords and shut off and banning and, and yeah that's yeah, why I get, kept it general yeah that, that would be great. Right. I'm sorry I don't know. So should yeah. I make a motion if we're gonna. So. So you said. Uh, so what I wrote was just a simple review and update village utility policies to support affordability. I'm not sure if that's quite the right way to say it, but that's I think that's where it gets at this. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, I agree. Um, I think it's a good idea to, to highlight those things. Um, so, but Lisa, when uh, one, of, one of your action items, you know, talks about the finance committee. I know that uh, you had put forward um, somewhat of a timeline uh, with respect to other entities, in particular HRC, you know, for bringing back certain information. And a very key portion of that finance committee is the person or position uh, of Melissa Van Zandt Dodd. Um, so, I, I, you know, I know we it's not necessarily in our purview to know exactly what Patty's next steps are going to be with respect to whether there's a replacement or how quickly any of that happens, but um, that person and position are very critical, you know, to those, um, to that particular action item and the following timelines that have been set by that. Mm -hmm. So all of that changes uh, unless there's a quick turnaround or it just immediately gets hand off, handed off to someone else. Yeah. I if I understand what you're saying, Kevin, I mean, my concern is just if we are trying to figure out what can we do for, you know, the last nine months of the year, 
given that we are going to be experiencing a big transition with our finance director, um, I just want us to be aware of that because everything we add on, you know, is in, in addition to what we're seeing here and what Patty referenced, you know, with our village staff already feeling like they've got a lot to do. So I guess I just want to make sure, I mean, I think um, this is really important, but I, I guess I want to make sure it's something that we feel like we can do uh, this year. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to ask in terms of the, are you talking about specifically about the utilities, electrical utilities? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I feel really strongly that we need to do all that we can as quickly as we can. Mm -hmm. And we're hearing from the community about that. So. Um, this week, I have what two or three meetings on this topic, and I'm really grateful that Melissa has pledged a dedication to help do some initial data analysis. Um, I, I believe that we'll know more. Uh, I want to have a report, an update to council for the meeting next week that that makes a statement of what I think we can achieve right away. And then I think that's a very realistic point, Kevin. It's going to, so much of, of, of the approach that I was recommending depends on financial modeling. <laughs> so, um, but I, I think specific to the electrical utilities, I'm hoping we can get an idea of some potential before we, Melissa's gone, just because it's such an issue in the community. Or we can say, or, or say we can't, and why. Mm -hmm. So I, I would like to ask for that time, you know, which is the rest of this week, really. <laughs> Not much time to make another recommendation. Yeah. Well, and, and I think, uh, Melissa, please chime in here, because I'm talking about your time. Um, <laughs> But a lot of uh, the electric has to do with our power cost based on the projects that we're pledged to. And so I think that that might be doable. Do you agree? I mean, I, 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 need, to, I need to dive deep in it. I'm really glad we're not meeting tomorrow morning. Um, I'm supposed to be doing some analysis, and that's what I'm going to spend the entire day tomorrow doing. So I got completely caught up to the point where I can dive deep into that so um, I don't want to speak to it before I start pulling everything honestly okay. okay so I mean the other piece of this that I think Kevin's getting at is I mean that is going to take if we are going to update policies when I think about how much time we spent to change policies already mm -hmm. it's going to take a substantial amount of time um, in just meeting time um, so so I guess I just want to think about that too. So I, I'm not opposed to it, actually. I mean, I agree. I think it's 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 critical, but I just want us to be aware that it's going to affect other things that we're going to do this year. And I would like to point out that the policies that everybody's talking about are all ordinances, so right. they're not just departmental policies. They were actual ordinances. Right. I'm also wondering, in terms of responsible, is HRC a responsible under a responsible uh, or group under? Uh, the yes, community? that's right. Since this, since I submitted recommended revisions, I generated that recommendation. So that's a, a late, yeah, after I sent in revisions, and then you'll see my comment here. Um, if anybody's listening and watching, um, the document that we're looking at for strategic goals has highlighting, and then I have a comment field. And um, this is just me being new, but I had no idea who the Resilience Network is. So I just didn't even know whether that was a fit or not. Well, the Resilience Network is a, a, a network of different people and organizations, but it's not really been functional as far as I know mm -hmm. for a year. So it was active for a, about a year, a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So that could probably come off. But Community Solutions is in it, mm -hmm. BC is in it, um, and other individuals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Because they're not active. 
Um, so I do, I do think, um, I, I'm not sure Antioch College then needs to stay on that list of resources. Um, specific to the actions, I think in general for the goal, um, the college has expertise and interest in issues of race, age, economic status, sexual orientation, gender identity, but I think what we're really focusing on utility and financial analysis, I'm not sure the college is a resource for the 2018 action. So I guess, you know, this is another question since I'm going first, <laughs> is do we have resources listed on this document just related to the 28 action or to the goal in general? I'd say in general. Well, then it can stand, in my opinion. One thing I would suggest in terms of the data crunching or the numbers crunching in the next few days, the community feels like the increases in utility costs have been substantial and yet we don't really know um, the average increase what it actually is since these increases have started and when did they start 2016 this is this is the third year that we just did the so, yeah. increases and so 2016 2017 2018 mm -hmm. So it would be, I think it would be very useful for us to actually get some numbers. So that, that data has been requested. Yeah. That's okay. exactly what okay. we're working cool. on. I mean, yeah. I don't want to get the cart too far yeah. in front no, of the horse, yeah. but not only that, um, the, the, an analysis of the actual average increase yeah. since the change, and also though a comparison to past years, because it was sort of the, not, I think a weather metaphor is appropriate, the perfect storm. It was so cold too. So then we want to make sure that we understand, you know, with some other use data. So that's some of the analysis that's already underway. Okay. Thank you. So just to comment on resources. I mean, you can add whoever you want to add, but I think we've seen how just saying, "Oh, township trustees, let's put them down." yet no one actually went to township trustees and made a concerted effort to involve them, but it's been years. So mm -hmm. I think that those resources should be realistic in terms of, well then who's the liaison? Who's the person who's actually gonna do that outreach? Otherwise it, it just doesn't have any purpose mm -hmm. sitting in that field mm -hmm. um, to me. It's just a token gesture. So I think it ought to be meaningful and that there is some direct there will be association. Out. I am committed to that. Yeah. Thank you. If, board, if we're going to add this convener, not school board, aren't you? Pardon? You're kind yeah, of a liaison. Yeah, school. we already have a meeting with two But so I'm talking about Antioch College citizens. Citizens? Does that mean we're survey monkeying each of these? But those have been taken off. I mean, that's my question about whether those stay on or off. And then the other question is just since I have to put this into the document for you to pass on the 19th, mm -hmm. I need to actually know what you're adding and not adding. So just when you get to that point, say mm -hmm. we're adding this, we're taking that off, because otherwise we're not going to be any more by <laughs> Should I take a take a, a swag at stating what I think we've decided about this one? Um, yeah. Because I, I don't want to take up too much time just on this one. Although this is our priority goal, right. so you know, um, yeah, I have a few comments as well, but I will. I, I do agree with Judy that when I look at any of these resources. Um, none of them at this point seem to be uh, actively engaged in any of this work, um, which doesn't mean that they won't be. Um, so, so I do think that is, is something to rethink. And, and remember, I mean, this is a work in progress. So, I mean, those resources, you know, can can evolve. Um, yes, yes. Um, so are you recommended to be taken off? I mean, I thought that bluing out actually was taking them off. You know. Is that? Is no, that that's just a little freak of my computer. I mean, I definitely think local nonprofits, and I suppose environmental commission is related to future activities. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, the others I don't see 
being engaged. If we add the collaborate with the township trustees and the school board to jointly seek ways to lower financial attack, that one, mm -hmm. then we definitely need to have the school board and the township on right. as, as resources. Let me suggest instead that we say something more like develop a relationship yeah. with the school board and the township. Because, I mean, we need to lay that groundwork. And I, and I do think those meetings are starting maybe should have been charging for one thing or another and and you know that hair on fire level of increase is over now we're just going to sort of cruise for a while i would yeah. i would say that yes that is true I, there were some incremental water increases that happened before the larger water rate increases the water fund though did not have adequate reserves whatsoever when i had started and then the decision was made to build the water plant. So we had to increase rates in order to be able to pay for the water plant. So yes, um, that's that's correct in two different ways. There, there were water rate increases, but they were very incremental, and they weren't enough to support the infrastructure upgrades that were needed by way of the water plant or the distribution system. So now the increases have been um, put into place reserves have been starting to build up the first full year of water plant um, loan payment will come this year we had a partial payment that came at the end of 2017 so i do think that we're going to have to once once we understand the distribution system and the needs um, that are going to be required there and we know how much the water plant um, annual loan repayment is going to be I think that another rate study will be required to, to kind of make sure that what we have in our current rates with the ordinance that's set forth as of now, um, because it was a five-year multi-year ordinance um, with the first, the first increase was 16, so it was a 30% increase in 16, 17, and 18, and then I believe it went down to either 2.5 or 2.25% um, for the remaining two years. So. Now that the water plant is taken care of, um, but we do know that there are distribution needs, I think that once some costs are gonna be able to be associated with those, we could look at water. Sewer doesn't have as many needs. Um, they didn't have regular rate increases either, but when the water plant was rehabilitated, again, we had to do some increases in order to be able to pay for that. But the, the, the sewer is doing, is doing okay. Electric, I believe, it was something crazy. I think it was like 1967 was the last time that the rates were even touched before the entire structure was looked at this last time. So the more electric you use, the cheaper it was. So that didn't really promote conservation. So we went to a flat rate structure. So everybody paid the same. And the, way, the reason why the electric rates seem to be so much higher than what they were is because I think that they were six and a half cents or so um, per kilowatt hour was the rate. However, we've invested in all of this green energy in our portfolio. And so we have what's called a power cost adjustment, which now everybody sees on their bill, which has already always existed. Now we have we have that well we had that power cost adjustment that was the driver. So sometimes that power cost adjustment was five and six cents. So if you put the six cents with the five cents, you had eleven cents, even though it only appeared that your bill was five cent or six and a half cents. So we just totally changed the rate structure, which kind of caused alarm because the rate seemed to jump up quite a bit, but they've been paying it the whole time. It was just kind of a hidden cost with the power cost adjustment. So to answer your question, I know that that was a very long answer to a very short question, but yes, we hadn't been doing regular rate increases for a very long time. They were very piecemeal, and we've had a lot of improvements in terms of water and sewer, and now we've got some electric improvements on the horizon because they hadn't been done in a number of years. So that's that. That's a history of the rates. I'm going to say another little historical piece because I was on the council for eight years prior to I don't know, years ago, three years ago, I guess. Um, we did get utility rate uh, studies done, and we did we did one of the things they suggested we should do. And I mean, I guess we didn't get very good advice. That's all I can say because we don't know how 
high that we should increase our utility rates. And so we went with what was recommended. Um, I mean, we had, I know we had choices, mm -hmm. some different choices. I don't know if we, used, we went to the top choice, but we thought all of those were viable choices. So that's where we're, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're kind of uh, dependent on the experts to tell us. And of course, we didn't know what we were. We, we knew the water plan eventually. We can't wait to know that it was going to cost as much. Right. We have some bad advice about that, too. Um, uh, okay. So I think good discussion. Judy, I, I know I have some notes, and, and it sounds like you do as well. Um, so before we move uh, be, be past this goal, um, since we do have some citizens here, any questions or comments? Okay. Um, all right. So then, yes. He's oh. In oh, was that a okay? Yeah. yeah. I don't think Bill thinks you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, you know. <laughs> I was like, what? I mean, I could be speaking for him. <laughs> Did you say under the bus? <laughs> David Ross. David Ross wanted to. Oh. I think Lisa makes some good points about sure. quantification and you know, a definition. I'm, I'm all for that. I think defining and quantifying some things like affordability and the demographics of people who need it and mm -hmm. what that means, not just for one group or one house, but perhaps a, a range of small, medium, and large, because there's a lot of discussion all the time about we need more of this and we need more of that. Well, how much do we have? How much more do we want? How much more do we need? How much more is even possible to happen? Defining, and I also like what you said, Lisa, about defining what the village can do is important and what it can't do. Because, yeah. because there are lots of people who think the village can do everything and clearly the village can't, so clearly you guys are the bad guys because you're not doing it. Uh, I think that um, the quantification would be really good. Uh, it seems to me that you're working on the goals, column one. They should be, for next year, much briefer and more bullet points as a, with some supporting stuff later on because I read this and I think, I know you're saying something, but it's like an EEO statement that includes everybody and everything. So it's it's pretty wordy and it becomes vague and meaningless after a while, I think. Uh, briefly stated goals and a few specific supporting things. And my last comment would be, it seems like if you're working on column one, I would start there and then work on columns three to five later. They're jumping to the solution of what you're going to do three and five later. It doesn't seem to be as efficient a process. So that's what I would say. Okay. All right. Let's talk about housing. Okay. So um, as Judy mentioned, the changes that are made were not included in the document that we have, but we printed off. So you should have something that says McQueen 2018 goals. And then behind that, there's an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, I have an Excel spreadsheet that sort of lists different uh, actions and when they might be done. So I'm going to read the goal that I wrote, which is not that much different, but um, it does not use the word for it. Um, and I've said it's a 2018-2022 goal. Frankly, it's probably more like it would become a five to ten year goal. This is stated as a five-year goal. Promote the retention, rehabilitation, and development of diverse types of rental and home ownership housing to meet current and envisioned future needs with a focus on low-income workforce and senior household that results in mixed income, environmentally sustainable neighborhoods. Um, can I move on to the actions? So can I just to clarify? So mm -hmm. was that meant to replace yes. the execute a housing development model? Yes. Okay. So um, the action items that I've put in here are fairly different from the action items that were originally there. For example, I'm not saying anything about inclusionary zoning, all of the information I'm getting from having talked with now for for people who do this work is then probably that's not the best idea for Ellis Brands. Mm -hmm. um, so here are the action items that I've listed for 2018. 
develop a housing vision policy and plans. And I'm going to just stop. So by vision, I mean like a simple one step, one probably sentence statement. Policy and plans, goal, I'm going to say policy plans goals, however we define them. I just today got a list of some communities, sort of like Yellow Springs, and what they have is their goals. And it might be a real simple thing, like they say, build 400 units of low-income rental housing and 500 units of workforce home ownership. So, so that's so I'm thinking about this year, drilling in and defining how many units of different kinds of housing we would want to see within, say, five to ten years. Um, so the rest of that statement is uh, that enable and promote the retention and development of housing needed for a diverse, vibrant, and resilient community. So that's, that, that's, that's one action plan. That, um, well, actually, let's see. Second, create actionable goals and strategies in line with the housing vision and policy. Three, determine the mix of housing types and number of units needed for the desired future of the village through 2022. Four, begin to develop a concept plan for mixed income rental and home ownership housing on the glass farm to meet the greatest housing needs in a development that is suited to that site. And whatever I am, five, I guess. Engage the community in a robust public discussion conversation about meeting current and future housing, desired future housing needs, and lastly, determine additional human, financial, and technical resources needed to meet the housing goals. So um, over the last week or so, I and uh, a couple of the other people, on, several of the other people on our housing advisory board have talked to four different consultant people that work in this area. And um, it's through the conversations with them that my sense of what we need to do this year is um, <laughs> is um, use the housing needs assessment that we have and the the community conversations to one develop you know where we want where we want the vision. And then the number of units and types of units that we would need over a five, ten year period of time. And then start uh, reaching out to develop developers and landowners to be looking at what kind of strategy would work for particular properties, would work with particular developers um, like that. And and there are a lot of different things that actually the village government can do, uh, whether it's zoning or, uh, I'm not going to go into all the different kinds of things, but there are a lot of different kinds of things. But some are going to be suitable for Yellow Springs, some aren't going to be, like inclusionary zoning is probably not. And we're, I'm getting a list of communities, and there's still more who we can talk to who have been doing this, I think, to help us think about the kind of strategy. But this year of 2018, I see is basically doing that. And then as far as the class farm goes, when I'm thinking of a concept plan, what I'm thinking of is, um, okay, these are the areas where housing can go. These are the potential areas where utilities and roads can go. Um, these are the kind, this is the kind of housing that we think we want to meet these kind of needs. That's it, you know. Nothing beyond that. And then the next step is go on. So I'm going to stop and see, get comments and questions. Uh, okay, well, I have a couple thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, first of all, I, I think if we're going to sort of put a time frame on these, I would shift it towards this sort of future ongoing activities and think about it there. Because to me, the goal or the outcome that we have, I mean, could go on forever, like the affordability thing, for example, right? I mean, that, that may be something that never drops off of our focus. Um, and I guess my sense is that, like you said, housing, 
Um, I mean, to really make a substantial impact is going to take a decade or more. Yeah. Um, so that that was my one thought. The only yeah, I'm not sure what 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 do you want to do instead of what I have. Um, I, I love the way the goals articulated. I, I just think the time frame thing. Um, I mean, it, if we want to, maybe maybe it, it it doesn't stay or it moves more towards like thinking about like you know this sort of like ongoing piece. You know, capturing here's what we want to get done in five years. But I think housing, in my mind, is going to be something that that will that councils will focus on for a long time. Um, so I guess I don't want to, I would recommend not attaching it to the goal part. Um, and then my only other thought, Wait, I, not attach what to the goal part? The 2018 to 2022. Oh, so um, you just want to say ongoing, and then you want to say 2018. I mean, I think so. all of our, yeah, I think all of our goals are there until we accomplish them. So, so are you saying omit 2018 to 2022? Or, yeah, yeah, maybe, or not have it in the goal column, but maybe have it in, if we want to try to, you know, concentrate on this future piece, like if we try to capture what we're going to do in one year and then in five years, so think about it more like that. Um, and then my only other thought, I actually, I really like the way you articulated the goal. I like the actions for 2018. These all seem like things we can accomplish. My one concern is focusing on the glass farm, and I think I've mentioned this before. Um, because my sense is that we don't know where the, the best opportunities are going to be for housing development. Is that, you know, I mean, are there, I mean, is it working with Antioch College and using the land that they have and, you know, tying into um, the Antioch College Village concept, or is it, um, looking at other areas that we have in the village or some infill possibilities. So I, I don't want to, or I, I, I want to, I guess I'm questioning whether we should focus on the glass farm at this point. Initially, that's where I was at, that we should do a plan for glass farm. But now, as, as I've been listening to the conversations and, and hearing other people talk, I'm not sure that that our energy will, will, we will direct it to Glass Farm. I don't know. Okay, well, let me respond to that. Yes. Um, I'm not saying only focus on the Glass Farm. Right. I think we immediately need to reach out to, for example, the Kinney, Kinney family and that property in particular. But the Glass Farm is the property that we own. The Glass Farm is the only property that we can do what we want to. Mm -hmm. The Glass Farm is the only property where we can have a significant portion of rental and low income, moderate income housing. Because anything we do, any kind of public part, private partnership, or whatever we do anyplace else, is going to involve some, hopefully a percentage of that kind of housing. But all we can basically do anywhere else is provide some incentives, help maybe get some money from the state, but there's no way that we can get that kind of housing on any private property unless someone comes along and buys it for us that we can get on the glass farm. Mm -hmm. So I don't disagree that the glass farm, a plan for the glass farm shouldn't happen in the next five years. But I guess if I think about, um, and I'll use low hanging fruit again, what we should focus on this year, I think we should be more open-minded about where our, you know, our, our more short-term impact can happen. Um, so it's not, it's not a fundamental disagreement with what you're saying about the glass farm. I guess it's just focusing on it this year. I, I'm not there yet. So. Um. So I, I actually, I've been kind of thinking about this, but my concern was that if, every, if we thought we were going to solve all our problems on the glass farm, it was a huge amount of pressure on that piece of property. And, um, and that that's when, you know, if we're putting all the pressure there, then that's where 
people get stressed out about you know all these different needs and we're going to just solve it on 30 acres of land right I mean when we did the PowerPoint uh, we added in the number the amount of acreage that is available for development I'm forgetting how much it is it's a lot it's a lot more than 30 acres it's what 100 and some acres I don't know but I, I, mean, I do know it. that as long as we have private property no 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 let me I mean please let me yeah. yeah so um so you know I had suggested and it was added into the PowerPoint to add this statement balanced housing development of mixed income and uh multi-generational housing on all development sites to create housing of varying types and cost to meet the needs of the village you know across income and demographics I think as long as we're not, I think it does make sense to go forward with a plan on the glass farm. I just think that what we need to be communicating to the community, and it's going to be in stages, likely, how that's developed. Anyway, so we don't want to make it take 20 years to happen. Um, and, and it is the, a key piece of our, of our plan because we do totally control it. But I think what we need, to, how we need to be thinking about it, it means that it, a piece, another a piece of private property comes up you know that's another opportunity for mixed income housing so how can we make that happen you know I mean theoretically we could buy a chunk of it you know I don't know what our the possibilities are there if we know there's going to be a big piece of property going you know go on the market and it's likely to be higher end or, or middle you know middle cost um, market you know, market rate housing how do we make sure it's mixed income because we say that's the but that's the healthiest kind of community where we have mixed income that seems if we want mixed in, if we want some mixed income and market rate houses on the glass bar we've got to have modest and low income housing other places as well or we're never going to meet the needs in our community so I guess I feel like as long as we have that mentality about it and so my question is so what if a big piece of property private property comes on the market this year what are we going to do to me that I mean maybe it's covered I don't know if we need to articulate but I think we need to be thinking about we may have a role to play there I don't know what that is and maybe that gets a little bit I'd like to address what you're saying yeah. because what I've heard from the people I've been talking to is start and when I say start talking to developers well first we have we have to have our vision and our goals together and then we go to developers and say this is what we want how does the, how does this work for you how how could you help us do this or how could we help you do this not about the glass farm but about any property could be the Kinney property the Antioch property any property so I'm not saying just focus I'm not at all saying just focus on the glass farm but we have to start what I'm hearing is we have to start getting out there and once we have our plan once we have our vision our goals then we start communicating that out and we have a lot of support for that too with the housing needs assessment but I don't see frankly if there were housing on the glass farm within five years I'd be like, whoa I'm not talking about like building on the glass farm next year this is a the glass farm would be a very long process but well, hopefully not. It, well, I'm saying five years. But I, I'd I'm love not, it if there were some housing in the last five years. But maybe. I'm not sure how you how anything goes sideways from anything anyone's said stated that they want if you take out the clause on the last farm. You're saying we want to make certain that it, the concept plan is developed that addresses these particular needs in a housing develop in a development suited to that site. If that site is glass farm, it is glass farm. If it is not, I mean, you're covered even if you take out that clause. Or because um, we want a, a statement is being made here. So one could parenthetically put the last, for example, glass farm, comma, private property, comma, any of college village or something like that. Or say on it is possible site. Well yeah, you yeah. do say any a development suited to that site. 
Well, but we are saying develop a constant plan. The only place we can do that is the glass farm. That's really the only place we have to sort of Okay, so here's but, where I've been. Can I have this? Is that the talking stone you have? Do I have to oh, that's the talking stone. I've got the stone. Um, so, so, so I think we're in what some people call violent agreement. Uh, we're all saying the same thing very passionately. Um, but, and, and of, uh, of course, I need to be careful how passionate I am speaking about an anti-college village. But um, I think what, and so we've already, I've, I've already stressed that it's important to make sure you have college representation on your housing uh, committee. So we're there. So I think you'll find there uh, opportunities that, that might be a little closer uh, to realization than even Glass Farm. So I'm not disagreeing with you. I agree. Yes, yeah, so you're not necessarily highlighting Glass Farm. You just happen to mention it. But if you just want to say Glass Farm, I'm saying do the parenthetical thing and, and include other things so we're not focusing on Glass Farm. So nothing's going to happen quickly, you know. But I but but I would submit that there's probably a little bit more momentum happening um, at, at, with Antioch College Village. And at the end of the day, I think we want people living in Yellow Springs and we shouldn't care where the dirt comes from that that structure is built on or renovated on, et cetera. So I don't think we're excluding anyone, but we don't necessarily need to highlight anyone. Uh, because I think you first said, survey all available property you know so all dirt is created equal uh in, in that respect and, and i don't just mean dirt in terms of available land you know but there are um so i don't want to say anything else about any that college uh but i think if you're if you're getting those folks involved um you'll you'll find something so, uh, some existing momentum that i think can get maybe launch uh housing just plain old housing. It doesn't have to be housing that used to be village owned land and now it's this great and grand and glorious thing. It's just where can folks uh, have a roof over their head and the, the college is interested in that period. Is there anything though that you think that wording on this goal needs to change? Um, in terms of you know this idea of trying to create a, a develop a concept plan at on the glass farm no i think in terms of being well, um, no is not the right word i think in terms of being complete and accurate you either are very vague in terms of where you're talking about it or you're very specific in listing everything you know so you know again saying glass farm that's important i understand that but if it indicate that we're highlighting glass farm, then that's saying something that may or may not be true. So I'm just saying we have to pick. We list every possible, every possibility, or say some very generic statement, or say, you know, nothing in particular. You know, but we all understand what we're saying, and I understand why we want to say glass farm, because we know what we mean, because it is, you know, village owned property. You know, but we're not, we're probably, I would, I would guess that Whenever we do this thing called affordable housing, that it might happen somewhere other than Glass Farm first. It'd be great if it did. Mm -hmm. I do feel like it, it would be great if it did because it just takes the pressure off mm -hmm. of that one piece of land that got, you know, historically got caught up in a big, and I think part of the reason is because you, there's a lot of need, and then everybody thinks it's, it's all got to happen there. and. We want to get the message that it, that there's a lot of possibilities in the village. Mm -hmm. It's actually a fair amount of acreage that's you know potentially developable, of course. And and Antioch, I don't know how we you know I mean that seems like an important thing to keep in mind and to start to engage more fully with. So. Yeah. Well, that's why they're they're fully represented on the. Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, I will say that uh, first of all, I support almost all housing development, especially, you know, and, and market rate. Uh, affordable, affordable housing. Housing for moderate and low income people takes some kind of subsidy. And that takes time. And that is a big reason why, whether it's Antioch or anywhere, it's going to take time. Antioch does not have deep pockets. 
space. They have yeah. space. They have space. They have so they, they, they want to donate some of what? their space well, for affordable. I'm just telling you know, that affordable housing takes subsidy. I, I, land yeah, I, would say talk, I, would say, I would say talk to the folks. See, because you, you said, and I really don't want to get in the weeds because I, you know, I got to be careful for yeah. obvious reasons. You know, but when you say donate, why? Donate to whom? Donate for the project. Can, can I suggest something? Because it's almost 8.30. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of way to go. No, I wasn't going to say well, last point. Maybe, yes. maybe. I think the other goals are, I mean, my goal, there's nothing to say about. Oh, so okay. to me, these are oh, the okay. ones that okay. I think I we worried. need to dig <laughs> into. We got a lot to go. So, yeah. so I don't want to, I want to keep Glass Farm on this action. I was going to make a motion that we keep but, it in. But I think we if we want to say so. additional, I mean, right. I didn't mean to exclude, and I can see it doesn't actually say, you know, be reaching out to landowners and developers on other potential properties. We don't need to finalize it tonight. I just want to remind us. We've had this conversation. Marianne can do some edit. We're going to be talking about it Monday night, but I would suggest mm -hmm. we not try to come to a, you know, I mean, it sounds like Marianne's heard the concern and she's mm -hmm. going to try to integrate it. And so I think we don't need to get the words all straight tonight. It, it is on as a resolution. So if yeah, you do okay. change the wording, you would have to, the motion would have to be to change the, to pass the resolution with whatever wording changes you discuss on Monday night. Right, Judy? Maybe yeah. Brian and I edit it together. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, I mean, it seems to me you and I are having the most divergent viewpoints. So if we can come together with something that we agree as on. As long as we're not pigeonholing ourselves, that's my point. Well, that, do, you, do you want yeah. to work with me? Sure. To? Yeah. And I think, I think we came to like a way to do okay. that. Um, okay. So, um, all right. So now we are talking about infrastructure, which is Kevin. Yes. Right? Sir. So I can be very quick. Um, you know, a lot of the um, actions, if you will, involve uh, you know water distribution, electric distribution, and developing those plans. So I would yield to uh, Patty and her staff that that that's on their uh, radar already. Uh, it's not going to be sh short term. Uh, I don't believe so, but I think we can get something started in terms of laying down sort of a framework in terms of how we how we step forward. We can do that framework, I think, this year. Um, adopt cli uh, climate action plan. That's either in, that mainly in the bailiwick of energy environment. Uh, environmental environment, environment commission. So we'll certainly work with them. I believe that work has begun already, and we'll just sort of put our shoulder to the wheel. To help that happen, um, you know the. Yeah. the Can I say why? I don't understand how that's involved. The adopt a climate action plan. How that is? What's its relevance to this goal? Um, Stormwater, okay. for example. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Economical and strategic best practice. Mm -hmm. Is that how it fits in? That, yeah, I, 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 it's not really that applicable. <laughs> Well, it, it's got a resting place, and anyone else wants That's to take fine. it. That's fine. I didn't if know. If anyone wants to take it, I just was trying to understand what the connection. I was but but I, I actually think that's right on the money. And if Patty had something to say about her staff have come to her with issues around that stormwater yes. runoff kind mm -hmm. of issues, yes. I think planning commission definitely needs to be added to that. But I think it is a larger issue than it. Then it would appear just from what's here. I think it's more mm -hmm. to dig into that. I think Patty and her staff were able to bring to the. Yeah, in fact, one of the things on the bullet point list is that we need to have a stormwater assessment and infrastructure plan for the village. It needs to, it, that is one of the things that the staff um, is likely to make a recommendation to council that we pursue, which is a, a study and a, an assessment and a plan uh, on how to proceed because um, these incredible rains that we have been having have just inundated uh, you know, businesses and homes and everything else and so that is something that we have been talking about at staff. So, so, so Patty, would this, that plan, stormwater assessment and infrastructure plan, would that sort of be the parent document of which the... For stormwater. Okay. Yeah, okay. You have to you have to understand the stormwater is an entirely separate okay. it, uh, utility from wastewater collection. Mm -hmm. They're two different things. 
I understood when, when you said infrastructure oh, got yeah. bigger, yeah. and it went broader, but yeah. I understand this whole, the, that whole plan is just storm. Right. right, correct, because right now, stormwater collection is virtually, is non-existent in many parts of the village. Mm -hmm. There just isn't any. Um, and um, it, it, what is there is old, deteriorating, a lot of people have um, you know, there are gutters and sump pumps and everything attached to the sanitary sewer. There is a lot of work that has to be done. We've pulled out the CMOM study and we've started looking at it and started working on some kind of plan for beginning to fix those things, which is going to take a long time. But the start of that is, in fact, an overall assessment. Yep. So it sounds like an action that needs to be added is that stormwater infrastructure. Well, again, all right, so I, I mean, I just want to say, all right, here's where we're thinking about what can we do this year. Right. And so I do think um, the, you know, future actions can be better articulated because I think this sort of study assess plan mm -hmm. for all of our utilities is probably where we're at. And right now it's kind of scattered, but it could almost be that and then each utility. Mm -hmm. But I think the reason for starting with the climate action plan is that's something we can do this year as a recognition that we need to take this seriously because it is you know severely impacting the village it very much is yes um but do we have time to really dig into this in 2018 i'm not convinced that we do if we're trying to tackle these other well problems. although i would say that planning commission because they're re rewriting the um Mm -hmm. land, use, use, yeah. land use plan can start to incorporate some of those things and does become recommendations that can go to builders, et cetera, et cetera. It, it, right. It will and, follow. and the stormwater assessment would need to be done, the study and assessment would need to be done by an engineer. It's not going to be done by staff. Right. So okay. it is potentially doable this year, but based on the cost. Right. I was going to say that's more. money. Yeah, it is money. Very much. Yeah. So, so. so did we add? Planning Commission. Yeah, I think Planning Commission would be good to add. I think adding something uh, around the comprehensive land use plan for 2018 is a good idea. That, you know, where these are, this is being contemplated in that uh, update. And I'm sorry, that was under actions to do Yeah. So I think, I think what, what you referenced, Judy, I, I think that makes sense for something we should do in 2018. Because that's happening in 20. Yes, yes, it is. Um, but I, I just don't see how we could add space to our meetings this year to really dig into the work that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, and so especially if we're going to be doing focusing on the first two goals. Mm -hmm. so so just, so. just to clarify, so I understand. I think what I hear you saying is there's actions that could be taken. So that future building team, team and stuff up. like that is getting done correctly right away. Yeah. But the full remediate the old stuff is a much bigger issue. Mm -hmm. So at least we can get the, the new stuff mm -hmm. the way we want it. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And you know, the whole gate once thing, when I've been meaning that ask that question like whenever we do repairs, I'm sure it's it's middle of the night, let's just patch the thing and run. You know, so I know we're not thinking about laying down extra conduit. Right, no, but there is a dig once policy in writing that says if we're putting if we are putting in whole new infrastructure or a, a new construction of for instance the the Cresco um, the Cresco mm -hmm. the utilities that they were putting in, what we included in the plan was throwing some conduit in there mm -hmm. um, so that it could that fiber could be run back, um, things like that. Mm -hmm. So Yes, there is a dig once policy that is in writing, and the crews are aware of it. Okay, right. And it would have been great if we had had that in place when we did the streetscape, right? Because we should have laid conduit mm -hmm. then, and we didn't. So right. you know, that's why this has got to be uh, formalized <coughs> in right. the land use plan. Right, right. Um, you know, so obviously, you know, when you talk about that uh, conduit and uh, broadband uh, fiber, that that covers that issue. Again, trying to move quickly. Uh, going to embody uh, village culture that is welcoming uh, and welcoming to all interests, etc. Um, We're on to a new goal now. Yes, I'm okay, sorry. Okay, let's say it nice and loud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, and then just before we move, 
Uh, any questions or comments about housing or infrastructure? Okay. Well, I just need yeah. a copy of uh, what you were referring to, Marianne, your, your proposal. So, so I'll get that. I wrote one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, goal number four. So, again, in, in an effort to be quick, there's been, um, I know Judith, that, that a couple years ago, I think, or sometime in the past, it sort of brought up the subject about um, you know, one of these goals in terms of uh, diversity, uh, diverse hiring practices. Um, so that's one of the act activities that we want to consider. Um, there's been work done to, uh, to request and uh, submit proposals for vendors uh, to do implicit bias training. I think all told we've got four, we, five. We have two actual proposals, the ones you gave me. Um, I have uh, talked to someone about submitting a third one and then we got Judith's information um, so we can contact that person as a fourth uh, for a fourth proposal. So at the end there would probably be four um, and we didn't actually actively solicit these as far as the chief just happened to be talking to the third mm -hmm. person which is, I mean it's uh, a, a person who's relatively local here who does this and, uh, and then Judith had that, the contact that she just sent out either yesterday or today, I'm not sure. Okay. So, um, so that would be four, and those proposals would be brought to council. Why are they being brought to council and not the Justice System Task Force? If, if that's what, I am open to anyone reviewing them. I mean, I, so let me speak yeah. you, my you perspective. Started this whole thing. Yeah, you started this whole thing. Um, so, you know, there's been, as far as JSTF is concerned, I believe, uh, the focus has been doing all of the above, i.e. diversity, hiring practices, et cetera, focusing on the police. I wanted to not focus on the police, uh, who are, as far as I'm concerned, regular old village employees. I'd like to consider our diverse hiring practices across the entire village. Mm -hmm. you know, that includes the police. You know, so you know, it's not necessarily that I'm trying to wrestle anything away from JSTF. You know, I'm, I just don't see this as a JSTF issue. Mm -hmm. now, what I was going to say, I don't see it as a justice issue. I see it as a justice issue, but not just within... Not justice. Right, 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 not a justice issue. Justice. <laughs> or you see it as a justice and a justice. Right, 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 right. It's a double J. <laughs> so, um, so that is, Brian, uh, why you know, I've been working and, and talking to Patty um, again, looking at it from the entire village, and, and Chief Cross, I, mean, I actually went to both of them. Uh, the, two, the two proposals that I provided, one of them is more broad, and one of them does focus more on police uh, implicit bias. Um, but I, I guess I want to go on record that um, I think a lot has changed with the police force over the last year and a half. Um, I don't think that lessens the importance of what we want to do, uh, but I kind of think it sort of uh, lessens the urgency, in other words, in terms of, uh, you know, we've got to make a change with the police force, and I think that happened organically. Um, so, so again, I think if we broaden our, our scope and look at entire, uh, entire village, because, oh, by the way, all of us in this room have implicit bias. And some of us may or may not be aware of the degree to which we have it. You know, so um, implicit bias does not only exist in police forces. It does not only exist uh, in non-people of color or, or vice versa. You know, it's a big deal and we all just need to be aware of it. And it's, it goes beyond just race. It goes to gender and, and, and class and other things. So I think it's important for us as a community um, you know, if, if everybody in the village could take some training uh, or take the tests, if I got paid by Harvard, I'd say, go to Harvard implicit bias, like I just said. Um, <laughs> but, so, long answer to a short question. Okay. Uh, it's bigger than just the police. I like this action step for 2018. 
Um, what I do want to think about, though, and we shouldn't get into it for this meeting, but in terms of process, I don't want us to forget that the Justice System Task Force did, you know, study implicit bias training and you know looked at pros and cons. Um, and you know, I also wonder if there's a role for HRC. So I would just suggest that before it comes to council, that it's digested a, a bit. Like I, it, it would be hard for me to get these four proposals and feel comfortable in making a decision. So that's my about like who we're. Yeah, can yeah. I say something here? Because we've had a little discussion about this, um, and um, I mean, I totally support the this effort. Uh, but one of the things, one of the things I wanted to say is, particularly because Melissa's leaving, that this the hiring practice thing. I think we really need to move forward very quickly. That that we're really even before we, you know, there's this. This, I, this thing called diversity hiring practices. I mean, it's very, it's very concrete. I mean, you don't have to. It's like when you are, inter, you know, how are you getting the, out, how are you getting the word out about the job um, so that it's getting to diverse populations? Um, you know, what sort of uh, applications are you getting? I mean, again, we, we can't know for certain, but we want to make sure no, we, we want, or no, maybe we, can. we can. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, and then, who's doing the interviews? And you know, is it a whole? Is it all white people? You know, for example. I mean, there's very simple things that a workplace can do to make it much more friendly uh, the process to persons of color. Um, so, um, so I, I kind of feel like that's kind of important because you know we're continuing to do hiring, and we that that feels really like a even before we adopt any particular practice, I would, you know, we can look at some of these practices and figure out how to make them start to happen without having, a, you know, having adopted, you know, a particular practice that's like a, a legislative, you know, it's a policy. Um, uh, the implicit bias training, I mean, one of the things um, that I do feel like we should do, and I think it's, it's a value to the community and it's a value to our effort, is to have a conversation in council, which is, I told um, Kevin that I thought before we start thinking about specific vendors, one of the things about implicit bias training, and I just got some information else, and I'll hand it over to you, and I thought council would be interested. When we looked at it for police departments um, and the data people, I mean, Beth Crandall did some great research on this, it's not very effective a lot of the time. So, we want to look carefully at, you know, sort of understanding, you know, understanding that. And she just sent that to me, and I don't really have all the details, but that was something that started to slow when we were thinking about the police department. It slowed us down because we're like, and, and there's a lot of money right now to be made with implicit bias training because of what's been happening in police departments particularly. And so there's a, you know, so you really have to be, you know, aware of the shortcomings, and so I thought I thought it was a little premature to ask staff to start trying to look at these proposals without that background information. And we've got enough really thoughtful people in the community who care about racism, and who have prob there may be other people who have information that could strengthen our effort before we go to trying to hire somebody. And Actually, I, the 365 project was working on this too. I remember. Mm -hmm. so. I'm sure they are. And you're, you've been active with 365, and I know you've been talking to Dan Mueller right. and you know, all that. So, you know, so it's, you know, maybe all the legwork's been done. I think just to have, even if it's a 20-minute conversation at a council meeting, so that the larger public gets drawn into this conversation is very useful. I also thought if we were going to bring some trainer from a distance, you know, we might want to suggest. I mean, maybe some of the other entities of the village would like to take advantage of their presence in the community. The, same, the diversity hiring practices, I think, I mean, I said this to Patty last year when I started talking about this, I would love to see our village be known that the, you know, the village, the schools, the nonprofits, the for-profits, we all use this practice, that we start to sort of make it a public, it shows how welcoming and how important we, our anti-racist uh, commitments are. And um, 
So, you know, part of having more of a public conversation about it as we're moving forward in these things is to draw the community in. So that's, that was, and, and I hate to hand the staff, you know, no, no, I, I hate to ask the staff to start doing legwork without this background material. So that's, that was my main concern. We, and, and maybe you're just doing the same background, but, but we do have information from JSTF that I want to definitely share with everybody. Well, and absolutely, and that would be yeah. very helpful. Um, but I did want to add that we are meeting on Friday with um, Tony Ortiz from the Ohio uh, Attorney General's Office, and he is the diversity liaison, and he's going to help us with developing a, uh, a recruitment plan um, to, to do exactly the things that you're talking about, is to get out to a more diverse um, uh, group in, of people, terms of, in terms of our hiring, in terms okay. of our hiring and retention and the whole, okay. he's awesome. coming in to help us with that. Oh, awesome! So, yeah. and I agree. And, and Julie, I really appreciate you, you adding the comment. And, and, and I do owe you an email <laughs> in answer <laughs> okay. to your question, but it's, it was not a big deal, by the way. Um, but to your point about whatever the village is going to do with respect to Melissa's position, um, I mean, I think we owe it to ourselves. Uh, you know, to, to, to show the residents that we're serious. I believe we were serious with the outreach coordinator position with respect to the things that uh, 365 JSTF expected to see in terms of that, and, and I think it worked out. We sort of thumbs up. Um, but, yeah, if we say we're going to do those types of things, I think it ought to be evident you know, in those outreach efforts, uh, in showing who we are. If you want to come work here, whether you're part of the police or not, this is what you're in for. This is who we are, and this is how we roll. Um, and so again, I think now that we have an opportunity to do, you know, what I suspect will be a broad-ish search, uh, then I think we ought to do, if we haven't been doing the types of things that we're talking about in the past, I think we need to implement them. Because that's low hanging fruit. Just ensuring that we're getting out uh, uh, to broader communities and adding to the app, however we do it, uh, that not that voluntary non disclosure. It's on there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I think this looks good. Yeah. Right. Can and can this looks that, very doable. I really appreciate that because I think there been, there, there's often a focus on let's hire, 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 hire. If not focus on let's retain, let's educate, yeah. mm -hmm. and why do I want to come work for you when I'm the only that guy? Mm -hmm. um, and I like that that's you're actively addressing that. And I also think I like that it's not just saying, oh, the PD, PD needs to work on this. Mm -hmm. It's no, anybody that works here. And I think maybe the reason that there is not a high level of success around any bias training for PD is that they're singled out as a problem given the training as a standalone, not the entire organization with which and for whom they work. And that's exactly what you're addressing. And right. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I think we I think we almost owe it to the police to not even mention them. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Just you get paid you get a paycheck from the village, mm -hmm. you gotta come to this training. Uh, because I, I don't want to do their job. Uh, so I think it's high enough uh, stress job, even in Yellow Springs. Uh, you don't want to feel that, you know, the folks that are walking by you think of you as the enemy. Uh, because I don't. I'm on the record. I'm not your enemy. So, again, just make it broad, make it good, make it deep. Okay? Make it count. All right. All right. I'm going to thank you on this goal. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, economic sustainability strategy, Lisa. All right. So, um... I, uh, I don't think there was any edits to the goal statement. Um, in terms of what can be done this year, um, these uh, recommended actions were informed by my um, couple of meetings I've had this year with economic sustainability. So there's people. <laughs> who are committed to do this work, if this is work that the council uh, wants, that incentive policy will bring to the meeting on Monday. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. 
You so, mean you're going you're to talk about it in your annual report? Well, yeah, it's ready to come to council for a final decision. Okay. So, I mean, there'll be discussion about it, but um, that pretty soon that that won't that won't come off this list, you know. Um, there's um, you know interest in people on this idea of localism and local entrepreneurship. Probably the biggest uh, one, and this was discussed at the last council meeting, was the designated CIC work. Because mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's going to be a work, staff time, council time, legal time, you know. So that, you know, that, that one's the third one, but it's a lot of work. The revolving loan fund is a dependency. I think to the designated CIC. Um, uh, the um, and then the last two is work that the Economic Sustainability Commission is interested um, in taking on. Great. So, I guess, um, yeah. I'm confused about the updated comprehensive land use plan and planning commission being in this particular goal. They're charged with writing the comprehensive land use mm -hmm. plan. So I'm not sure how. You know, I I wonder. And again, I'm um, I promise that it won't be many more months that I say. You know, I'm new, so I don't know how this got here, but. It seems like this has been carried along uh, as a carryover that that was lumped into this goal. So I don't know if it goes somewhere else. And so. Well, we're talking about economic sustainability. Mm -hmm. And so if we think about what's embodied in the comprehensive land use plan, I mean, it may apply to other things as well, but it, it does guide how mm -hmm. we, yeah. yeah, and how we, you know, sustainably. Develop economically. So okay, thank you. Because one informed the other. I mean, I'm just not sure. What do you mean? It seems to me that it would be, make sense that the um, ESC create a document for that goes to planning commission that states their ideas around this would be ideal from an economic development standpoint yeah. in terms of zoning, in terms of this, in terms of that. But that that document goes to planning commission when they review the comprehensive land use plan for consideration. Sure. That, that, not all of these actions are ESC. No, that's like a separate one. These I are just all plan. actions that tie into economic sustainability. But I agree with you that that collaboration is good. Just see the so the spot that we, and and I think my name needs to be added under Rosalind um, in there. Especially but I'd like that clarification about ESC providing some guidance. Well, and they should maybe be, I think if, if ESC gets involved in the designated CIC, that's going to take up the majority of their time. I, I think this, I mean, I like the idea of you guys spending a meeting talking about it mm -hmm. and, you know, and helping council vet it, but I think it's a council decision. So, it's a council decision to do it. Right. And so, I mean, maybe right. we need some more. I mean, I, you know, oh. I think getting some more information about it, but, mm -hmm. um, but that to me is what the ESC would do. Right. Well, and, and, and actually, to that point, at the last meeting, do we pause? Or, no, you, you carry right on. <laughs> <laughs> at, the last, at the last council meeting, um, the recommendation was made by Marianne that ESC, you know, might look at this. And um, I communicated that to the ESC, and their perspective is, you know, they need to think about kind of scope, like what what are they being asked to do relative to this decision. So I think that we need to think about that more. They're thinking about it more. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. I don't want to go on and on. Yeah. Um, the process in terms of uh, 
updated the comprehensive comprehensive land use plan. I just want to be clear on that. Uh, planning Commission recommends things to council, correct? We ultimately, I just want to be, I'm pretty sure that's the way we've done it. That, they, that comes to council and we final and we take those recommendations. And, and Planning oh. Commission is starting to look at how to do it. And for example, there are things in there that are really old and mm -hmm. right. have very little relevant so i think that i would say kind of for the benefit of the new people i do i have to i have to look and see if that was actually a document that was approved by council in any uh, way the last person we, i wrote it was the village manager he wrote it with in collaboration with planning commission no we edited it when i was president of council and i know it came to council when i it, it came from planning commission you know made recommendations council reviewed and i think we made some changes too because i remember that makes sense to me yeah, so I just, what I'm quite certain we did that, but you know, if anybody needs to look to see if we were supposed to do it, that's so why we did do it that way. So just for me, it makes sense because we're the elected body and it's an important document, a guiding document. Right. <laughs> I agree with that. So, one quick thing for the clarity of this document, do you think it's helpful to just kind of split it so that the those things that maybe economic sustainability is kind of working on? And those things that planning commission are working on right now they're just kind of blocked together what we're supposed to do and patty and melissa we're going to uh, try to work on this first is collapse responsible with the actions oh, okay. so that those are associated Great. more directly so that'll make it yeah that will make it more clear which yeah. Is, yeah which is what this is document. starting to do yes yeah. okay. thank you so yeah so we'll connect those okay great because yeah. then that will help with you know i think um Judy's question was good because they're of the they're mixed up together right now. Yeah. Thank you. Could could I ask a question about the CIC just real quick for a, 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 I just want to throw an idea out while I'm thinking of it. Um, it is something that is a council action, agreed. Um, but if you would like it to be that it would be um, appraised by economic sustainability. Um, what about Chris and myself writing up a draft um, and letting economic sustainability see the draft and working collaboratively that way, or do you not want to do it that way? Right. I'm not it's sure. Um, a draft of, the, of a CIC, uh, of, the, of the development, you have to have a document that drafts the CIC that says this is what the CIC is meant to do, um, this, is, this is how the CIC will be structured, that kind of thing. I would rather have an exploratory conversation. Uh, for example, when uh, Richard Lapides was at the last council meeting, he was saying, oh, well, the schools could be involved in the township. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe they could. But I'd like to have an understanding of the scope of what the CIC could do and the, um, the difficulties in well, not setting it up. I mean, it's not that hard to set it up, but, but what does it mean? What time constraints? And, and I still have this niggling feeling about, you know, we just had one that we got. That but it wasn't a designated. Was designated. No, I know. I right? Know. So that could have been, but it wasn't. I see. Right. So at the ne next economic sustainability meeting, uh, it's going to be attended. I should get the person's name that's from Fairborn. Right. Do you yeah. recall that person's name who is kind of a, got expertise and they're going to, this person is going to come to the meeting and talk to the Economic Sustainability Commission and anybody who else who wants to come to that meeting about what what do we mean by designated CIC and what can it do and what can't it do. Well, would it make sense to have them come to council meeting? Rob Anderson, city manager for Fairborn. I don't know, but I don't know. I mean, it just depends on what the role of the economic sustainability. I mean, sure. Maybe I don't know. Like after or like the next economic sustainability meeting, I think is April 9th or something like that. Four. Four. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I, I defer we were just trying to move along with economic sustainability mm -hmm. with the charge that came from council last Monday mm -hmm. which was what 
um, that the Economic Sustainability Commission might do some initial assessment um, about a DECIC. And pros and cons and, but you know, kind of a SWOT analysis. You didn't call it that, but. I mean, to your point, Marianne, uh, maybe, you know, designate, I know designated CICs can do certain kinds of things, which we won't be able to do as a community without it. But that doesn't mean it couldn't be dormant at times, it seems to me, that it could be dormant and then it can come to life when there's a need. But, and I know Richard's idea is that it can play a much more strong leadership role. Um, right. so I don't want to do it anyway. But just a thought. So, where are we? Uh, I think we're, we're ready for the next goal. Right? Can we take a five minute break? Yes. <laughs> I know you do. No one else. Yeah. All right. Thank I, you, though. Five minutes. <laughs> yeah, sorry to stand up, but I've, I was, I've been Don't like be sitting at a desk since 7 o'clock this morning and my back. All my like these chairs are awful, too. Oh. They are, yeah. Oh. <laughs> you knew you did, though. You know, I thought the same thing, Judy. I thought this could be a really short meeting. It's still okay. I thought 9 o'clock, but. Yeah. It's not too late. It's still okay. A little shorter. I just keep telling myself, say less. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Say less. <laughs> tackle, do the. <laughs> Yes, well, one day we'll all learn or we'll just stay here longer. Um, yeah, Rob Anderson, Fairborn City Manager. Yeah, and I believe he's part of the uh, Green County CIC. Yeah, I think so. I guess the yeah, well, one thing that could be looked at is the advantage of having a local one as opposed to how we want you to the Green County. Yeah, that, that actually did come up <laughs> in economic sustainability, and uh, uh, there was some pretty strong perspective. Oh. Karen, mostly that, uh, that the Green County won't do what we needed to do, and who, but I didn't understand why. So. Well, we're not going to run our revolving loan fund program, that's for sure. Thanks. And they're actually well, pretty ineffective in general. I know a couple of the meetings. Surprise, you want to be on TV, just get right there. There you are. Ah, my God. That's when everybody's sitting in their homes right now. Uh, don't we turn off when we're on break? <laughs> There's not really a way to do that. I see. Because you guys never really take breaks, for the most part. Uh, so I don't have so a way to switch that, that over. Uh, of course, no one's here, so they, probably aren't that many people. Did we I mean, figure out the sound yet? There's, I still? mean, there's just not a good way to do it. So the sound, you mean? Yeah. Because hmm. the way it look is hooked up, the only way to get sound to go to the houses is through those mics. But I mean, but I think. Marianne was referring to. We still have people hearing. say that that's not on my. Agenda. That's, that's on the spectrum. Yeah, I'm already calling yeah. my clothes. So that's awesome. If there was anything yeah, to do about it, then yeah. But there's just it's I have no. Seven. Well, I mean, then got how about if we get some music? Yeah, I thought it happened fast. I mean, because we're I know not that. talking about yeah, people who have old TVs. I mean, TVs still, I mean, started a Dan has program. a new TV that's whatever it's called. Oh, you can't ever deny it. Every once in a while, I can hear it. Yeah, I mean, like I just don't. Yeah. I, yeah, it, I, I can't have an, I don't have an answer for it. Well, it's like the answer is the answer is we need to get online. So are we are we close to doing that yet? Or? Doing what? Uh, streaming on YouTube. Live? I could stream on YouTube right now. Yeah, well, that's what we should start doing. Okay, screw channel five as far as I'm concerned. Um, I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, the majority of people who watch us live, I don't <laughs> really have the ability yeah. to get onto YouTube. 
It's a good so I don't know if that really solves that <laughs> problem. Uh -huh. Right, but they're not hearing this anyway, right? So we could still have, you know, they could I'm still, I guess, right read our lips, but we could still scream, right? Overnight and I couldn't find all right, well, we'll, we'll have to, yeah, yeah. Oh. we'll have to. I mean, this is a question for whenever we get this well, community access commission to happen. Because right now it's just me, and I don't know if I if I can make that decision. Yeah, well, we were supposed to. I'll talk to Patty because I mean we've kind of been talking about this phase three for a while. I think we have to wait for Cap to do that. So, all right. I can't remember the flavor, but they were starch. So good. Really? So you would and you would scream. I actually saw you. Did you experiment with one time? Something popped up and it said you were streaming streaming live now. Yeah, like last weekend. Yeah, yeah, and I like popped in and then it like stopped. Well, I used to travel mm -hmm. so much. So you were you just playing around with it? Yeah, just working out the kinks yeah, on the system so we could do it. No. Okay. Testing, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, I could, I mean, literally, I could start streaming this right. Yeah. Okay. It used to be always coconut oil. But well, I, didn't, try I, didn't, okay. I didn't feel like doing that because I haven't gotten approval to do that. I, and I, Melissa, everything don't has to go through like that with all your. Blah, 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 blah. Well, I have right. to lose okay. every pound. That's good to know. Coconut I think, uh, oh, no. if you think you're ready to try it on Monday, I mean, yeah. uh, I, mean, it's, it's, I mean, I could do it at the same time. Like, yeah, right. it's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you know, if we can do something that's actually going to work for people, and then what's not working for people, but, you know, they don't have the option. But we'll you have to be by the mics. Right. That's oh, the same super thing. Good. Oh, mm. This, I, 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 don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to have well, sensible it, audio. We do it all different times. Right. For either, either the recorded really version or for the really good, but they I don't, I don't really know what they can hear. Right. Just, you so. know. And do we not have uh, the ability to like, minutes at least, maybe do like some kind of extension mics? I don't have But we could buy them, right? I don't know what my I don't yeah. have access to a budget. You usually I don't put them in a bowl. But I mean, theoretically, yes. Melt the Te technology wise, wise. Theoretically, uh -huh. if we bought more Austin stuff, we could use it. Oh yeah, because we've got a bunch of money, actually, that we never spent for community access. Okay. okay. All right. So I have no idea on that. Topic. All right, Beth. Cool. We have a stand. We have standing meetings, right? Yes. So when do you stand? Could she make it? Yes. Yes. Yes, yeah, so just let me hear about that. Yeah, I will send you guys the information. Yeah, you send it out, and then I'll hand it to you. I'll hand it to you. Oh, how is it? I'll hand it to you. I've already offered her gummy bears. I've already got this on the back. She has a handful. She wants to go to the back. I'll be back, guys. All right, going to get that gavel. All right, so we're going to talk about the justice system, uh, which I believe okay. is Judith. Yeah, and so I've got some edits already. Um, so, if I, okay. so the first one, um, establish a model village justice system that supports a just, given that we're talking about the justice system, a just, self, safe, and welcoming community for all. Uh, cross race, age, economic status, sexual orientation, gender identity, ethnicity, ability, and religion. And then I wanted to add a sentence that I think Brian had in originally, but it wasn't, uh, with, but I changed a little bit, which is that the village justice system, in concert with all village staff, will be proactive against our races. Because I, I know, I know we have, and I, so anyway, I'll just shut up. How does that sound to people? I don't know that in concert is quite the right verbiage, but it's what came to my mind. you life. read that first sentence again? Okay. So it's the same sentence. I'm just mm -hmm. adding in, so establish a model village justice system that supports a just, safe, and welcoming community for all across race, age, economic status, sexual orientation, gender, identity, ethnicity, ability, and religion. And I added in just because we are talking about the justice system. And then, you know, because of, you know, current circum national circumstances around justice systems, I added that second sentence that the village justice system in concert with all village staff will be proactively anti-racist just because it's been such an issue nationally. So I don't know if that makes sense. I added in concert with 
Couldn't um, it was staffed just because, you know, Kevin mentioned, you know, we don't want to just be acting like this is a problem just in the justice system and in our, we don't want to like making the PD feel like we see them as the problem. Mm -hmm. Could it just say all village staff will be, I mean, rather than hanging it at the end, I don't want to get into wordsmithing, but. Well, um, all village staff will actively. Well, actively. And I mean, that's inclusive of the police. So because they're village staff. Just to say all village staff will be proactively. Yes, that's well, well proactively and then the okay. rest of your statement. Okay. Well, I'm going to put it after since we're talking about the justice mm -hmm. system, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So all village staff. Okay. That's fine. Is that okay with everybody else? I like it. Okay. And then under the next section, Maximize utilization of the mayor's court. So this is for this year. Uh, we have, we are going to be bringing a recommendation, not immediately, but we're in process of a change in the mayor's court. I'll be talking with Patty with you about that. Mm -hmm. um, recommend in terms of not the mayor, but you know our police department, I guess, in terms of maximizing utilization. So we've got, we are bring, going to be bringing a recommendation once we get input. Okay. And, and uh, Chief Carlson has some stats for you on that. Did he send those to you? Uh, well, we're, we have a recommendation that we, now we're going to go through this process of getting input. Mm -hmm. And one of the places we want to get input uh, is the YSPD, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, obviously you, you know, and associated administ you know, staff. Um, so it will be a couple months yet out before that will come. So just to say we are specific, have us, we are working on that very specifically. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to be talking to Pam. I know there's been conversations with Pam as well by the people on the work committee. Um, the next one is recommend policy to begin addressing disparity and impacts the village justice system on those economic economically disadvantaged. We were saying on uh, the poor, which um, is, which we were calling ameliorating disparity. Index. So which we were calling a dip, a a dip, or yeah. But if, if we don't want to use the word for, you know, this is fine. Um, again, I added in supporting the chief of police commitment to training, which promotes just. I added justice and safety through. So I just added the word justice because I don't think we don't forget what this the purpose of the justice system is um, through um, de-escalation, crisis intervention, training, and cultural competence. So that that's a, that's a separate That's a separate action. action. That's the next one. So yeah. supporting the chief of police commitment to training which promotes justice. It's on safety. the sheet, Patty. It's She's on just here. adding a word. I'm just adding a word. Sorry. Under the green. Yeah. I'm just reading out what's here, and okay. then there's um, consider research and collection of data to develop fuller understanding of current YSPD practices and develop policy recommendations when appropriate. The next one is co-sponsor with HRC one public event regarding village justice system regarding the village justice system to increase public understanding. Abroad, <laughs> and um, finalize the village taser policy that's coming to the next council meeting. Mm -hmm. Now, the next one I put establish justice system task force as commission, and I don't know if the council rather wanted to say consider establishing, or we want to say I personally am for establishing it, but I don't know if the council's there, so I think we should say consider. Consider. Okay, so we can discuss it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I have one you, last one. You, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm wondering if it should be a little broader, because I know there are places that have like citizen review boards, or that I think even the Human Relations Commission in Dayton does some stuff with police. So, what, what, what is the intention? behind that 
Well, I was going to add one, which I don't have quite the right language, because Pat's been doing this research on, I mean, citizen review board is one, um, and these other kind of community entities related to the, you know, either police department or justice system. But to me, we established, I mean, you and I wrote that proposal that justice for the justice system task force. The way I, my motivation, I thought it was motivation of counsel, is that because of what was going on nationally in the justice system, it cre an increased awareness of, uh, you know, the huge amount of, you know, people in prison, uh, the huge percentage of people in prison being people of color, you know, they, 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 there, became, there has become this national awareness of, you know, the problems in our justice system and that there is a need for change. And I don't think community review, you know, system review boards do not address that. So this is, and I don't think it's fair to ask our police department, I, I think it's a civil society responsibility that these changes be made. It's not, we cannot expect, and I don't think it can happen, just to expect our staff is going to fix that, that issue. And they're a part of that larger system. And so, of course, you know, we have issues. We, we also have needs for change here locally. That's the way I see it. So it's sort of like having some ongoing mechanism of like oversight. I would see it continuing new policy. I mean, I see it as primarily making, you know, policy recommendations kind of like we've been doing. I mean, we have to look at the JSTF charge, and Lisa and I would, you know, bring something to council and it would be a public discussion, you know, because I think it would be different. But, you know, there's work like okay. disparate impacts on the poor. We're not going to finish that work at the end of this year. There's no, I don't think. So, so, so are we yeah. now talking about yeah, JSTF morphing into? Uh, a law, an ongoing commission. Oh, but. It's a conversation we're going to have. We okay. haven't decided I, I heard that. Yeah. But then, uh, well, maybe Marianne brought up the citizen review board thing. Right. So are the two related? I mean, it, would JSTF morph into a citizen review board? Um, Pat DeWeese and uh, I think Reverend Randolph and maybe somebody else was involved have been kind of looking at what are these other entities that sort of have provide some kind of citizen oversight or contact with the police department. It, you know, it, it may be oversight, it may be improving Improving relationships, you know, they, there's different kinds of entities out there, and I will. I don't have a language here, and I didn't include it here because it was not part of our charge to to the committee. But it is some of the work that's been taken up. So I basically think if we're, if there's a working group who's going to do, be looking at that, we should. And then we've had um, citizens ask us to be looking at citizen review board, and there's you know evidently. It's, significant interest, especially among younger people in the community, to look at that. They, and many, you know, really want us to do that. Whether we can do that, you know, we're doing the research on it. So past little work committee is doing that research. Um, yeah, if council say, doesn't want us to do it, then we should say that. But I think we should not interfere with that work. I think it's... Why don't you just say, um, consider what, what was the language you said? Well, Instead of establish JSPS as a commission, consider I say establishing. consider establishing. Consider. Yeah. yeah. How about yeah. if we say that? Yeah. Which that can sort of include the kind of stuff. And other. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we could we could say or another, you know, entity. But and I, I don't, yeah, <laughs> but I don't know if we need to. Well, I, mean, right? I agree. But not to not to mix words or seem too harsh, but you know the charge. Like, well, I, whoever wrote. We wrote the, we kind of wrote the okay. charge, Marianne and I did. Said it would be established, this was about yeah. April of 16, right. 16? Two years. Approximately two years. Okay. And then council would review periodically. Okay. So right. it, is this the review that we should be doing already? Well, Lisa and I, I don't know who suggested this, but I thought it was a good suggestion. Somebody suggested that we, at the next meeting, I thought it was going to come up, that we were going to suggest that JSTF 
continue till the end of the year, and it's at the end of the year when we would think about transitioning it or not into something that's long-term or not long-term. But we're in the middle of a lot of work. We didn't want to try to make a transition right now. Okay. So we were going to try to get the blessing of council that we continue to do our work under the current, you know, charge of council. So approximate can mean a lot of things, but it means a ballot. So I guess the question is how strictly closer to the letter of the law do we want to stay? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the, the commission began in April of 16? It was set in April. We didn't actually get started working until September because we had to advertise and set get the people on board. Mm -hmm. And I think our first meeting was in September. All right, so I will say this. As long as we're doing it by the book, the question is, do we do what I think I read, which means start in April, two years later in review, or you have some time to get going, and then two years after you get going, you review? Well, if we're talking about to this year making a decision about what to do, that review is going to start before the end of the year. Um, it could start in April, it, 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 <laughs> but it's going to take a while for us. I mean, I don't know if it's going to take a while for us to decide or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess we could, do, but I think Pat, I think it was Pat's idea, actually. She was suggesting we just keep working under our current, um, because we're in the middle of the work. Of right. Several but pieces. Aren't we now talking about the proposal that you guys are going to bring to council? Um, right. And we can discuss that then. Yeah. So I think the, the more important thing here is that we don't want it to be a foregone conclusion that JSTF is going to become a commission. So as long as we say consider, and I think that's enough, we that understand enough? that that means it could morph. Um, mm -hmm. But then I think the discussion of whether, you know, we stick with April or extend it, that, we were that's your proposal. We were going to bring that on Monday. Yeah. Okay. That Monday. And the only other thing I was going to suggest is on the one, two, the fourth um, column, HRC, we added. Oh, it's there already. I didn't yeah. see it. Yeah, it's there. The, and the other thing was maybe check with the chief about inserting the word justice since they are responsible for enforcement, not justice. Make sure that that's okay with them. Okay. Well, it's I'm semantics, but they, but they, they I'm again, again, you can tell me about that. Yeah, it's um, just email, uh, email him, Judith. And, um, well, it's saying that just uh, establish a model justice system that supports the just. No, the second one supports chief of police commitment and training, which promotes justice, safety. Uh, that's that's just I will run that past him. That's all. And, and it may be that you simply need to add the word social okay. before justice. Yeah. Social justice. And because to Judy's point is that police officers aren't responsible for the court part of the justice system or the penalty. I think really I was trying to get around the issue of, of victims. Ooh, social justice. Is right. that social justice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah. I don't think of it that way, but um, I, I, it sounds like there's particular terminology. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, that's fine. Can I reach, how should I reach him by? Um, I, I will uh, just email him and I'll text him to check his emails. Okay. How's that? Well, you know what, I'll send it to you and him and then you can text him. That will work. Okay, so my goal, um, I don't have any changes. Is that so, what? Yes. <laughs> well, this is the one I'm responsible for. Right? Right. Um, my goal. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Uh, sure. Any comments? All right. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know if anyone has any thoughts. Um, this goal has been ushered by the Active Transportation Committee and a lot of citizen support, so it's had minimal impact on village staff um, from my perspective. Um, and everything's happening. I think it's really concrete, so I don't have anything to add. Okay. I'm concrete. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, no puns after that. <laughs> I think you need to add Denise. Um, I okay. want to see her name. <laughs> Good idea. And this seemed to be supported by uh, the feedback from uh, people who responded to the question. I mean, this thing comes up. And then we also have this letter. 
Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because, you know, that again is what I meant at the beginning. I, I think Ellen saw just our goals, but didn't see all the action steps which mm -hmm. speak directly to this. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've been lucky. Things came together really nicely with this goal. Mm -hmm. So, getting that grant and everything else. So, uh, okay. Okay. Any comments? Sure. All right. Okay, well then let's talk about the last one. Yeah. Okay, the last goal. Um, 2018-2020 green space goal. That that time period is because of the grant. Mm -hmm. um, complete the protection of key properties in Jacoby Greenbelt, protecting a thousand additional acres in sub watersheds, encouraging conservation practices that protect soil and water, preserving the agricultural nature of the Greenbelt and protecting water resources surrounding the village. And then, uh, and I met with uh, Crystal to go over this, so these are things that she and I agreed upon. Uh, so the first one is review and confirm the Yellow Springs Urban Service Boundary and the Jacoby Greenbelt properties relative to that. So we wanted to be clear where that boundary was and Planning Commission is going to be the first group that looks at that. And um, Denise has sent out that map to Planning Commission. Then the next one, with the Council Land Trust, agree and prioritize Greenbelt targeted properties. And you note their times on these two. Uh, and then the third, Support to come to land trust educational events and opportunities, and the final one, authorized financial matches for targeted properties as needed. So, you know, most of this is being done by the council land trust for providing some money, uh, support as needed. So, does anyone have any questions? No. Is there already money yes. earmarked for this in the budget? Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How much is there right now? We, we budgeted 200000 for this. But that is over the life of the grant, right? It's not all in there. 18, right no, now. It, is, it could happen right now. It could happen. Right. Now. I mean, in fact, they don't expect it to happen yeah. for a couple of years. Yeah. So. Okay, thank you, Judy. So, <laughs> Water protection had been included in that goal, which is really a separate goal. So I pulled it out as a separate thing. Where, where the plan has been reviewed, council just needs to approve it, and it's going to come to council. So um, it says adopt that, approve and adopt source water protection plan and outreach material. Okay, and and why do we need to separate it out? Because it's not part of the Jacoby Greenbelt. It's not part of that. But project. it is part of protecting soil and water. Okay. I mean, well, there's not really a goal, right? I mean, it's you just know, we're going to be done with it next month. So okay. Low hanging fruit. Yeah, right. Well, Basically. <laughs> then do we even need to put it anywhere? Because there's no goal attached to it, right? It's just, it's just an action. Let's make it a goal and we say we're one knife of the <laughs> does, it, work does it go really? with the one that we were talking about before? We were talking about like slime water? And... No. No, it's not snow. No. no, but I thought, I thought my group with another goal. You can stick it back in, but it's just not part of the code of Rebo. It's not part of that work. It make sense to me to continue. But it is yeah, part it was of left over from the water when the water plant. Sure. So it's not part of infrastructure development now? Maybe I'm just missing it. I think it's part of protecting water resources, but um but anyway, um it just I don't know. I think we should have some consistency, so. Well, I mean, that is part of the to come to land from that whole goal is to protect source water. Is source water protection. That's part of why you're approving some of the land purchases you're approving. It does fit. You, you 
just have to finesse it a little tiny bit, but it's of a piece. Well, the source water is the groundwater. Not the, not, I mean, yeah, eventually it flows into the groundwater in some places, but the Jacoby Greenbelt, much of it does not get into our source water. If you put green space slash watershed, shed, I mean, um, that's what you're doing. Okay, well, let's just, uh, why don't we just, we're going to do it, and let's just not, let's not put it on the goals, right? Let's just say so we're going to do it. Just like right. wrapping up something from last year. Right, yep, yeah. that sounds good. All right, cool. I forgot that. Okay, so, any other questions, comments, from Jason and Council? Okay. Well, uh, then uh, I guess we'll have a motion to adjourn in this work session. So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Do I need to do anything to prepare for the meeting?